So what do you think? Does it come in black? What's up guys? We are doing a test on the all new MacBook Pro M3 Max 16 inch, the space black, fully specced out. This is the top of the line versus my MacBook Pro 16 inch M1 Max and the Mac Studio M2 Max. And there's some very interesting findings out of this test, which I am getting this information together. And this is kind of a, I won't say it's, a, it's not a live video, of course, because you're watching it recorded, but as I'm recording this, it's sort of live because I'm getting information from Blackmagic about Resolve in terms of the performance differences, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we're gonna get down to it. First and foremost, let me talk about the specs on what I got on each of them, just so you know what we're looking at in terms of comparison here. The Mac Studio, it's a 12 core CPU, 38 core GPU, 64 gigabytes, unified memory, and two terabytes of storage. This is a good mid-range spec for the M2 Mac Studio. Now, of course, I did try the M2 Ultra, absolutely phenomenal machine. That was only for a brief time. This has been the machine I've been using for the past month plus, two months, and really enjoying it. Again, two terabytes of storage for you know editing video is a little bit cumbersome. I do have external storage, but it is what it is. The 16-inch MacBook Pro M1 Max. This is a 10-core CPU, 32-core GPU, 64 gigabytes of unified memory, and two terabytes of onboard storage. This is the top of the line. This is the 16 inch MacBook Pro M3 Max. I've got 16 core CPU, 40 core GPU, 128 gigabytes of unified memory and eight terabytes of onboard storage. It's a very expensive machine, but I wanted to test this out to really put it through its paces. This is gonna be a, a number of videos on this machine. First and foremost, we're gonna be doing a comparison for a DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut in terms of rendering times. And then as I am able to download uh, Baldur's Gate 3, for whatever reason, Steam is kind of like downloading content from LimeWire back in the day. It just takes forever to download. So by the time I am this video is out there, I'm still probably downloading the game but I will do a subsequent video in terms of gameplay because I've got the black PS5 controller on this bad boy. It just matches beautifully to look at that. This is the black one, by the way, this is the silver one. So we'll talk about the colors in just a bit, but there we go. So let's talk about the M3 Max 16 inch MacBook Pro in space black. Color, we gotta talk about this color. It's absolutely gorgeous, guys. When you see it in person, when you take it out of the box, you're gonna be like, wow, this is beautiful. Arguably, Apple's best laptop they have ever made in terms of color, design, the aesthetics. I mean, yes, it's the same as the previous MacBook Pros, but when it comes in this color, whoo! And you got the black cable, uh, braided cable to match with this with the MagSafe 3.0 on that as well. Now, in terms of the, one of the attributes to this space black is the chemistry they have in this, the, in terms of this anodized layer or whatever they're gonna call it. I'm not too sure, but it's not a coating but it's the way that they put the black onto it that it just reduces the fingerprints. And I can tell you, it is not a fingerprint magnet. I have touched this, my hands get a bit oily and greasy at times and fingerprints are minimal. Now, when you go on the keyboard, that's a different story. You're gonna see fingerprints. But when you go inside on this, on the side around it, you're not gonna see it too much. The trackpad I feel might be a little bit of a different uh, in terms of the chemistry, how they did it. So you are gonna see some fingerprints on the trackpad, but around the laptop, on the outside of it, and on uh, near the speaker area and the surrounding area, no, it's really, really sleek. It is absolutely beautiful. Uh, the display on it is gorgeous. It's bright, it's vibrant. Now, in terms of the brightness between the M1 Max MacBook Pro and the M3 Max, they are about the same. To be honest with you, to the naked eye, I don't see much of a difference. I did see that Apple said that this could be a little bit brighter, but when I put them both in the same wallpaper, I'm looking at them next to each other, they look relatively the same, but they're it's Liquid Retina XDR display. It's gorgeous, it's unbelievable. High refresh rate on this, 120 hertz, uh, ProMotion, all that great stuff. Got the updated HDMI port on this that you got on the M2 Max that is on this as well, which I appreciate because with the M1 Max, when I was using a third-party uh, display like the Asus ProArt, I was trying to use HDMI to get that uh, higher refresh rate or and just wasn't getting it. So now with the M2 Max and the M3 Max, you can do that with third-party dis displays if you wanna use the HDMI port, et cetera, et cetera. But if you're using the studio display, which I have here with the Mac Studio, then just plug it in Thunderbolt and you're ready to rock and roll. Same ports as everything else, Thunderbolt 4, all that great stuff. So there's really no difference in terms of that, but it's all what's underneath the hood of this bad boy. 
This is a three nanometer chip, the first from Apple's uh, silicon line, and it's gonna give you better power efficiency, better performance overall. They were talking a lot of different numbers here. So that's where I decided, look, I had the opportunity to, to kind of do a little bit of a benchmarking here with the M1 Max, the M2 Max from the Mac Studio, and the M3 Max MacBook Pro 16 inch. And my findings are pretty interesting. So first, what I wanted to do was test it on DaVinci Resolve because a lot of people use DaVinci Resolve as sort of the uh, the gateway into a lot of these benchmarks. And I uh, recently shot a video for the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 6K full frame camera, and that only shoots in Blackmagic RAW. And so I said, you know what? I was shooting a 6K open gate. Why not try that out? Plus I was using the Fujifilm GFX 100 to shooting that in 8K for the B-roll of that camera. So I said, why not put this together? Because I'm going to be editing this video anyway in DaVinci Resolve. So let's see how it renders. And this is where it gets very, very interesting. And I retested this a number of times. As a matter of fact, I am editing the day that this video is going to be released because I've been retesting over the weekend. I've only had this machine for about 48 hours. And by the way, this timeline is around 13 minutes thereabouts, just to kind of give you a, a reference point here. So DaVinci Resolve, how I did this, I, the timeline was at 8K because obviously 6K and 8K footage. So I just did an 8K timeline. And what I wanted to do is test it in terms of compression. So I wanted to reduce it down to 8K H.264 really bring that down. So I don't know, in DaVinci Resolve, it's very hard to tabulate the exact file size of your timeline, but I can tell you that the end result was around 30 gigabytes, 30.61 gigabytes thereabouts. Let's look at the numbers here. On the M1 Max, okay, this is again rendering at the H.264 in 8K. It took two hours, 40 minutes, and 14 seconds, according to DaVinci Resolve. The M3 Max, comes in slightly faster at two hours and 21 minutes and 28 seconds, according to DaVinci Resolve in terms of their timing. And the M2 Max Mac Studio came in at one hour, three minutes and 19 seconds. Now, let me explain to you how I did this test. I have with me, this is the Samsung X5 SSD drive, one of the fastest SSD drives on the market, even after so many years. So I put all the files onto this drive. I wrote to the desktop of the respective machines. So on the Mac Studio, M2 Max, I wrote to that desktop. On this, I wrote to this des desktop, and onto the M1 Max, I wrote to this desktop. So it's the same thing going through each of the machines. I deleted all the rendering cache. Everything was gone. I deleted all the projects. I saved the projects onto this. I imported back in. So everything is playing equally. All the rendering se uh, settings are exactly the same. I'm shocked that this was almost 50% faster, but I'm shocked, but I'm not really when you think about it, because look, when you're looking at a laptop, this is a very small enclosure. And when you're producing a lot of heat, especially when you're dealing with large file sizes and you're doing rendering, this is going to kick up the fans. As a matter of fact, when you start rendering on both of these machines, the fans do kick up. Now they do quiet down after a few minutes, but they rev up at the very beginning. This Mac Studio, nada, nothing. It just chugs along through and it's quite smooth now play back on all these machines when i'm playing back on quicktime it's all stuttering it's not going to work so i mean it's about a 30 gigabyte file it's it's just not playing back really really well but now when we go to final cut things are a little bit different now with final cut what i did is i took this respective file that i've exported out of each of these machines 30 plus gigabytes and then i put into a 4k timeline in final cut and then again, I saved it, H.264. The file was about four plus gigabytes. So I'll give you the exact number right here. The M1 Max came in at 16 minutes and 28 seconds. Decent, more than decent. And it's mixed of 8K and 6K footage. The M2 Max came in at 15 minutes and seven seconds. So slightly faster out of the studio, but not. we're not seeing the big numbers as we saw out of DaVinci Resolve. But now with the M3 Max, we're getting 12 minutes and 54 seconds, the fastest out of all three with Final Cut. Now, this is what I was expecting with DaVinci Resolve, but we're seeing it here in Final Cut. All right, guys, so a little bit of an update here. I just got off the phone with Blackmagic in Singapore because one of their head offices in the region is here based in Singapore, which is nice. And we ran a series of tests on the phone, just kind of did like a one minute render on each of the respective machines on the M2 Max, Mac Studio, and the M3 Max uh, MacBook Pro. 
And what we're finding, of course, is the Mac Studio is still running ahead, even on that at H.265 and ProRes. So uh, what they're gonna do is check on their backend to see what's going on. When you're dealing with applications that have not been optimized yet for new chipsets, et cetera, et cetera, even if you're in photography and you take a new camera and you shoot it in RAW and you can't read the RAW files in Lightroom or Photoshop because the product's not released, things happen. And so you may see other videos that are benchmarking and saying this or saying that. I'm gonna put the disclaimer here is until this product is out in the market, until it's in the hands of consumers, and it's really in the hands of developers, give it some time to get updated, get optimized, to really take advantage of some of the software like DaVinci Resolve, et cetera, et cetera. Um, what we're seeing in Final Cut in terms of the numbers is more in lines of what I thought I, would, I was gonna see in Resolve, and that probably will happen in updates coming in the future. But nonetheless, I just wanna give you guys an update on that, and with that, back to the video. With that said, the MacBook Pro 16 inch and 14 inch respectively go on sale tomorrow and maybe there will be an update from DaVinci Resolve. And if there isn't, they say it's fine, then obviously enclosure, the way that the architecture inside of the Mac Studio is designed, is going to take advantage of larger file sizes. Having said that though, using this for photo applications, Photoshop, Lightroom, and uh, Luminar, Topaz, all that stuff that I usually use, it's been a breeze. It's it just blazes through everything. So does the M1 Max, to be honest with you. Um, they're both fantastic machines. Obviously, this has been updated. Uh, you know, it's going to be a faster machine overall. Now, compared to the M2 Max MacBook Pro, I don't have one, so I can't compare it side by side. But look, Apple has done some nice increments in terms of the speeds, processing, and overall efficiency on all these machines since the M1 was released. And it's, But it's not such a big jump that if you have a M2 that you need to jump into the M3 unless you want the space black, which I can't argue with that one. It's absolutely gorgeous. But if you have the M1 Max and you're happy with it and you're like, look, I'm only doing 4K video and I'm just using Final Cut or, you know, just basic editing. Do I need to jump into the M3? I don't know, to be honest with you. I would say you still got a fantastic machine. But if you are a professional and we are going to put it through its paces, I'm not going to do different geek bench and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to put it through its paces with a production house and we're gonna really test it. And if you do see that the M1 Max, based on your configuration, may not be up to par for what you need nowadays with your the cameras that you're using, the files that you're using, the editing software that you're using, um, you know, Cinema 4D, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that might be where the M3 Max comes into play for you and might be a very viable option, especially if you're a creator that's on the go and you need to edit, you need to have that performance. I think this machine will be there. And I believe that as this machine comes out to the public, and people use it more, the software development developers will update the applications accordingly to take, uh, take advantage of this three nanometer chipset inside of it. Let's go into hard drive speeds on this because this eight terabyte is pretty quick. The write on this I'm getting with the Blackmagic uh, speed test on this, 8,411 megabytes per second, and the read is around 5,522 megabytes per second. Anyway, guys, those are my thoughts here on these three machines. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. If you have any uh, discrepancies that you're finding through your test, I'd love to hear from you guys. Anyway, this is a beautiful machine. It's a phenomenal machine. It's a beast. And arguably, it's the best content creator's laptop on the market, hands down. And you know what's nice about this? You unplug this thing, you take it with you, and it performs exactly the same. Show me a PC laptop that does it. And it's not a PC versus Mac thing, but let's just put things in perspective. The fact that you get this kind of power and portability in this size, plugged in or unplugged is pretty freaking amazing. Anyway, guys, if you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, more content coming your way. Thanks again for the support and I'll chat to you soon.